Hello, welcome to tomorrow again. Please thumbs up this video, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already subscribed, and you can share this video wherever you see fit to share it. Um, with respect, of course. It's been a while, you guys. Well, I'm back. And today I wanted to tell you a story. It's a true story. Um, so, it's story time. You know, you got most of you guys that have been following me, um, you already know that I was raised by my grandmother, my father's mother. And um, with that, uh, her being sort of a single parent, uh, my father was there um, sort of part-time, <laughs> but basically my grandmother uh, bore 100% of the responsibility of raising me, my sister, and my brother, my younger brother. Um, so, Back in those days, you know, if you get a babysitter, that was fine. And if you couldn't, and you had certain types of jobs, you could actually bring your kids to work with you. Well, my grandmother, during the 60s, she did uh, work in, like, nursing homes. She worked in the... Uh, in the kitchen as a, as a cook or assistant cook, whatever, she was cooking and she would let me and my sister, my brother wasn't born yet, she would let me and my sister sit in like a lounge area uh, that was sort of connected to the, <laughs> to the bathroom. And we were so bored, you know, back in those days you didn't have cell phones and you know, you didn't have most of the stuff you have nowadays as far as uh, electronics. But you were more reliant on creativity. Because it wasn't there, you would create uh, playtime. You would be more creative in your thinking. Well, I don't know exactly how me and my sister at such a young age understood Zodiac signs and horoscopes we were literally like five <laughs> five and seven years old and we were studying with each other horoscopes we would watch people come and go because my grandmother was very strict we didn't get to do a lot of things we spent a lot of time uh just sort of watching people and i've used the same measures now that I used back then to figure out what someone's sign is and to figure out certain parts of the personality that sort of go along with certain signs and it became a hobby. I started when I was about five years old and throughout uh, grade school, junior high and high school I would sort of study and sort of guess what signs belong to what people. We would also incorporate what hand you wrote with according to what signs that would indicate certain things. Um, even as we got older, your blood type, we could almost guess. We could almost figure that out or sense it somehow. And just sort of talking about it right now, it feels like I'm... Uh, I don't know, I'm saying I, what I shouldn't say, but I understand now it's okay. I can tell people what me and my sister did, uh, but we would never tell anyone. We would just sort of keep it to ourselves. And if we had uh, someone that we both knew, uh, we would sort of guess their sign. And probably in high school, we were about 60, 70% accurate in that. And we just took a lot of delight in in being able to do this and I as I mentioned I still use um, those tools today when I'm giving a personal reading or just for, you know just for the fun of it uh, so I've in that sense I've always been into uh, the zodiac into uh, what horoscopes fit with what uh, sign and also, we had it sort of figured to the month and the, what part of the month a person would have a certain personality. You know, my sister is no longer here. Um, I miss her, especially when I get to talking about stuff like this that 
the two of us shared exclusively. Um, so, having given you this story time, given you this little bitty explanation of how I personally do horoscopes, um, I'm going to start with air signs and I'm going to give you a little bit of of a peek into your future if you are an air sign. Just to give you a reminder, if you're an air sign, that means you were born um, under the sign of Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. And the thing that sort of the, the sprinkles of glue, the sprinkles of confetti um, that make you stand out from the rest of the signs. I can't believe I just said sprinkles of glue, but you know what I mean. The thing that surrounds you, the energy attached to your sign. If you are an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra, the thing that makes you stand out the most from every other sign, every other element, is that you love to talk. <laughs> You are ruled by air, which is communication. You enjoy expressing yourself. Now, we can sort of differentiate Aquarius from Gemini to Libra. Libras enjoy talking, but probably less than Aquarius and Gemini. Geminis probably could stay on the telephone all day, literally, and all night talking. Uh, not just about anything but usually trying to figure things out trying to put a puzzle together nothing gets an air sign more excited than to sort of figure things out and put things together uh, using their verbal skills now for people born under an air sign for the next couple of months now I understand the climate that we're living in right now and it is extremely annoying uh, but we will get through this and two months will pass so we might as well talk about your individual uh, scenario in about two months air signs are going to be faced with the possibility of extending something uh, something that branches off from themselves it could be an education it could be that uh, you meet someone and fall head over heels in love and if you're a Libra there's a bigger chance of that happening than if you're Aquarius. Aquarius uh, not so much. I'm Aquarius. <laughs> so um, look out in the next couple of months for something that extends from you. I hope that makes sense. I'm not always good at explaining things, but that's the best I can do. And I can give you some examples, something that would extend from you. Uh, it could be a childbirth. It could be a pregnancy. Uh, your novel finally gets published, and that would be great for Aquarius. Uh, and for Gemini, you finally... Uh, got someone to listen to your cause. You finally got someone or you were right about a cause. Something similar to that. Okay. Next we have fire signs and these are in no certain order. If you are a fire, fire sign. Okay fire sign. The fires, I keep looking, I keep looking down at my notes because I can't remember every single thing. So I've got my notes down here. My notes. Um, yeah, fire sign, um, you hold more passion than probably any other element other than Scorpio, which is a water sign. We'll get to Scorpio next, but fire signs are Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius and I'll put the signs here your element is fire because you have a lot of passion sometimes though your passion can go inward and your desires could go in the direction of what benefits you and I would advise fire signs to also incorporate what benefits others uh, that way you can have more balance once again the fire signs are Aries Leo and Sagittarius um, Aries in particular can be very um, 
sort of like a daredevil. They can, uh, they don't have a lot of fears. Uh, they would be the type of people that would climb a mountain for no reason or ride a motorcycle across country. Uh, you don't deal with a lot of fears and if you do have fears and phobias you tend to want to tackle them. You tend to want to start this war, almost internal war within yourself uh, about these fears. So I admire fire signs in the sense that you don't let fears hold you back. Now, my prediction for the next two months, and once again for all of these intuitive predictions, for all of these signs, please take it with a grain of salt. It is not meant to be taken 100% literally. It's for fun. It's sort of tongue-in-cheek. It's just something to do rather than to twiddle, <laughs> rather than to twiddle your thumbs when we're, you know, sort of in isolation. It's something to think about. You might want to share the video with someone that uh, is one of the signs and it sort of rings true for them or you feel that it might help them in some way. But don't 100% base your life on uh, anything that uh, someone is saying is predicting for you because there's so many variables and if you don't have someone right next to you or you're engaging with them somehow maybe over the phone or in person if you don't have that kind of um, energy then it's it really lessens the accuracy uh, for the intuitive uh, readings. So based on that, just take it for what it is. It's, it's entertainment. Um, now, for people who are born under fire signs, uh, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, in the next two months, I wouldn't be surprised if you met someone that totally changed your life. You may, it may be that you met them in passing and because you met them in passing, something else happened uh, and then something else happened and then that was to your benefit. You know, that's really what serendipity is. So this could be possible for everyone, but in particular in the next two months, meaning May and June, this will be a high possibility for people born under fire sign. But fire signs, please remember to share the passion with people who are uh, close to you. Don't just sort of seek what's best for yourself. Also, I want to talk to earth signs. Now the earth signs are Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. You appreciate things from the earth. Everything is from the earth. So you have a tendency to really put a lot of value on material things. Another thing about earth signs, you enjoy jewelry. It just is your forte. It is something that you, you just really can relate to. It gives you some kind of boost of energy. Now, for those born under earth signs, that's Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo, in the next two months, meaning May and June, I think for fire sign, I said April and May, but I mean these intuitive readings are for May and June. For earth signs in the next two months, look, I don't want to say look down everywhere you go, but there's a high chance that you'll find something of value on the ground or on a floor, but make sure it's not in someone else's house or in, in a store. Make sure it's, you know, it doesn't Sorry about that, Earth signs. My battery went out. Um, I had to recharge. Um, so, where I'll, I'll try to pick up where I left off. Uh, Earth signs, be aware that there could be something on the ground of value that you find. It won't be attached to another person. Uh, and that's the best that I can uh, explain to you because I feel that there's good karma around this object. It could be something that you lost or someone close to you lost something and you're able to find it and give it back to them. Uh, also, there, there may be a possibility that this has already happened for some of you. So if it has, excuse me, I'm getting my uh, energy sort of confused, but uh, chances are there will be something of value that um, you will benefit from 
I'm gonna say emotionally from this object. So sort of uh, look out for that. Finally, I wanted to talk about water signs. That's Pisces, Scorpio, and Cancer. Um, these three signs are under the element of water because you have um, a way of moving about through life intuitively. You are the most intuitive signs of the zodiac, especially Pisces and Cancer. Scorpio, you are the most passionate of the entire zodiac, um, but your passion can sometimes get you in trouble and it can be misconstrued as anger, especially male Scorpios. Also, for female Scorpios, if you've been told that you've got a chip on your shoulder, try your best to sort of analyze that and see what you come up with. Uh, not that it's necessarily true, but it's a possibility. So, for people born under the sign of Pisces and Cancer and Scorpio, uh, use your intuition to sort of get out of a situation. You're going to need it in the next two months. So in May and June, make sure that you use your intuition. Don't be afraid. Trust yourself. Trust your feelings. And that really goes for everyone. If you feel that something's not right, then it it warrants to look into more. Uh, so don't be afraid to do that. Now, I wanted to end this video with a positive note, on a positive note. Um, uh, there's a saying, it's one of my favorite sayings, and I try not to get too boggled down with strange facts, with, with speculation. But one of my favorite quotes is, this too shall pass. And it's never failed me in all my, you know, years. I have found that um, with hope, hope always floats. If you keep your mind positive, I, no matter what comes your way, you'll always win. You'll always rise uh, to the top. So remember, there is nothing that is permanent. Most things, or everything pretty much, is temporary. There is an end to it. Um, even in the worst case scenario of death, uh, the grievance of losing a loved one, it does not stay the same. It doesn't get much better, but it doesn't feel the same as it did when you first lost that loved one. Uh, in time, you sort of get used to a new, unpleasant normal. I don't know any other way to explain that, but most things are temporary. So I live by that saying, this too shall pass, because I find that it gives me uh, some hope uh, that things aren't always as heavy as they seem. So, with this, you guys, I am sending you love and light, and I'm wishing you the best of the best. Uh, try to hang in there. Keep your head up. Uh, think positive, because that's where your power is. Think about that. Uh, when you think positive, you rule the situation. This is tomorrow again. Wishing you guys the best of the best. Mwah. Thanks.